In this video we're going to look into the sheet metal function on SolidWorks. This is uh, for bending sheet metal. Um, it would be used in, like in my town we do a lot of jet boats, so uh, this would be used by the boat industry for bending different parts. Uh, this is just going to be a quick video on the basics of uh, just a couple different ways to bend the material. So we're going to start with the sketch on the top plane and we're going to draw our base. This is going to be the base of our we'll make a box, well, kind of a box. But. And I'll dimension it to uh, 10 by 10 and you can go into your sheet metal function. Now you can make your base. Uh, this is your base flange tab. This is just going to be the start of our box and after this we can start adding edges to it. Um, it's going to ask us our sheet metal parameters. Uh, this is the thickness of our sheet metal. Of course you can increase that as much as you want. We're going to use 8th inch. And you got your bend allowance and auto relief type. Uh, we'll get into that stuff later. But for now we're going to check mark that and that gives us our base to start out with. From here we can start adding edges to it. So if we go up to edge flange, click on edge flange and now we can come collect some edges and if I click on that one it'll allow me to either bend this down or up either way and you can put it anywhere because uh, you can decide the length here. Um, you also choose the angle that you want this to bend at. So you can bend it farther than 90, you can bend it less. For our box we're going to do 90 degrees. Uh, we got our radius. This would be the radius of the die that you're using in your press brake. Now a press brake is what you would use to bend your sheet metal and a common one would be a sixteenth on that edge so that just increased that radius a little bit and then we have our length and we could increase that to four inches and then it asks us down here uh, where do we want to measure from this four inches here. Now you can measure it or from the top here. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see what that's doing. Now that's just either growing it an eighth of an inch or shortening it. It just depends on where you want that four inches from. Now if when you're done with this you want the box to be four inches tall then you would want to measure from the outer from this bottom line otherwise if you wanted in between the top and bottom to be four inches you would use your inner and then you got your flange position this is just whether you want that bent on the inside of that edge or on the outside of that edge so this creates the bend right on that edge so it actually will add a little bit of material out here for bending it up. You just gotta remember that 10 by 10 box we have now if you use the outer uh, will have grown by an eighth of an inch now uh, just based on that thickness of that sheet metal. If you want it to be 10 by 10 overall on the outside you'd use your inner and there's a couple other options. This is just right where the radius on your bend starts a couple other ones we'll keep our box 10 by 10 and then you can come in you can collect as many edges as you want however you have to remember that looks nice but like a lot of things you can do on SolidWorks you can create it but actually being able to bend this part wouldn't really be possible 
you couldn't bend all four of these edges. Did he really just say you can design parts in SolidWorks that can't be built? Well, yeah, that's the problem. But what Clay's up against here is that he is using a press brake to do his parts in his shop. And what he might need is a different method to do the parts. He's limited by the equipment he has available. Let's take a quick look at some of the types of brakes that are out there and see if we can resolve this dilemma. If we go to Wikipedia and look up press brake, we find this nice animation of the operation of a press brake. And this is where Clay was talking about the 16th inch radius of his die. It's located right here. Also on Wikipedia is this video of a press brake. While we're at Wikipedia, let's take a look at a different kind of brake called a cornice brake. The cornice brake in our shop is about 8 feet long and it lets you fold an entire sheet of metal on one line. Here's the lever that operates the clamping mechanism. And this is how we would bend things with this brake. Let's use it now to make Clay's box that he was designing up in SolidWorks. Let's see if we uh, run into any problems with this device. First thing that happened is I didn't bend my metal far enough. I only got about a 75 degree bend on that one. Let's try it again here. And I want you to notice a concept called spring back. And that's my metal springing back a few degrees that you have to compensate for every time you bend. Now here's a potential problem area. You can see how easy it would be to design a box that actually wouldn't fit on our brake because the sides are too tall. You can almost see this problem coming even without me pointing it out. No man, pushing harder won't help. Oh, well, here's your problem. Yeah, we've got some serious interference between our box and our brake. As you can see, our bend doesn't come anywhere close to being a 90 degree. What we need is a different piece of equipment. 
or a different design. But let's stick with the equipment. This is a brake that I call a finger brake, but it's also known as a box and pan brake. It has all the same features of the cornice brake, where it clamps the material down and then bends it. But it's got some tricks. These individual fingers can be removed from the brake. Now we can just take our little box, slide it in on either side of that finger, and our edges don't interfere with our bend. Of course there are still some problem areas. We could make the box too big to fit in our brake, but in this case it works quite nicely. We've established a nice, tight, 90 degree bend, and our original problem is solved. Clay really needs to get one of these finger brakes for the pieces that he's doing out at his work. Now keep in mind, you can use just the finger brake to completely make this box from a flat sheet. You've got the long edges, can be taken care of over here, and then shift over to your fingers to take care of the short edges. Here's a dustpan that was done on this brake. And that's where the name box and pan brake comes from, is because it does pans and other intricate shapes. Another way to do this would be to use a stamping press and a square die which would fold up all four sides of the box at the same time. Keep in mind, clay does not have a finger brake. So if we go back into this, one of them's got to go. And then you'd have to put a end cap on this, weld it on there. If we go with our three edges, and if you didn't want all these edges the same size, you'd have to do it in a couple different edge flanges. So if you just did that back one and you wanted two shorter sides on this, you could bring up another one, make it two inches instead of four, using your same options, same radius on your bin. Click both those, and then you can start getting a little more creative. See it? No. That option of having that on the inside probably wouldn't work out for you. We went back into that. We might want that from the outside. There.
and that's just one of the ways to do this. I'll show you a, another way to do it. Um, there's several different ways you can do this though. So if I delete all that, we'll start with our same base again. We got our 10 by 10 square on that sketch. If we go into features now and do an extruded boss base. We'll create it four inches. It was the same height of our last one. So now we got a solid box. Now if you go into your sheet metal function, you can do a convert to sheet metal. This will allow me to pick the edges that I want to convert. So the first one I'm going to pick is the base. I'm going to use that same 10 by 10 square as the base. And same radius, same thickness, eighth inch. And now it'll ask me to collect the bend edges. So I want that one, that one, and that one. And if I green check mark that, that'll create my box. And that's really handy for uh, either a simple box like this that was pretty easy. Um, there's some other reasons, just uh, for getting the right angles and stuff on a part. Um, it might be easier to make a solid shape and then convert it into sheet metal rather than trying to do the edge flange. And that was a couple ways to get started. Um, you can play around with that, make some different parts, and uh, on the next one we'll start getting a little more in depth onto some of the options you can do with this.